Good afternoon, everyone. I am so happy to be part of this webinar. I am so happy to celebrate to celebrate um, International Girls in ICT with you and um, very well informed from all the speakers that have spoken today. And I think my, my topic is quite an easy one because the speakers have given you guys a lot of information to digest, a lot of information to go through. Um, so currently I am in, in Venda. So I am in the last town, basically. I've been working to, I'm building a, a last mile, actually building a, a, a last mile that connects Zimbabwe to South Africa and then eventually will connect all other set of countries. And um, it's quite a, an exciting job that I've stepped in ever since I hung my lab coat from the nuclear lab. But today I just want to talk about these future proof um, ICT skills and after that I am then going to um, share a bit about what I do. Um, if we can go to the next slide. Um, so as you guys have seen the COVID has really brought us into a space that you know whatever you've been doing while you are studying putting together your your career trajectories your career plan And, and in doing my research about this topic, I actually found out that, you know, since 2012, the WORF and virus um, organization have been talking about an era where everything will be digitized. And, and, and now we are in that moment where we have to digitize. I am so grateful that um, South Africa um, came up with various policies and, and also that the commission that can really ensure that the country participates in this era. Unfortunately, we have to do everything right now as this pandemic is forcing us to do that. But I just want to start off with the top 10 skills um, that um, have really, um, I've seen them rising and now they are dominant in the, in, the, in the private sector, in the public sector, and people like me that are entrepreneurs. Um, so WEF did this research in 2015 where they listed a number of skills um, that people need to have if you are a leader or if you are planning to be one or if you're just planning to work, basically. These are the top um, 10 skills that were released in 2015. And then if you add 15 years to that, I mean, five years to that, um, you then realize that you know, there's a full um, change. You know, it's, it's really a, a metamorphosis that has happened of skills that a person needs to uptake. And that includes complex problem solving, critical thinking, creativity, people management, coordinating with others, emotional intelligence, judgment and decision making. Um, and those go on and on because now people have realized that, you know, when there's an inclusion of humans and technology, there are certain number of skills that you have to upgrade yourself into. But specifically for today, I just want us to look at the top 17. I wanted to do 10, but then again, I had to rethink of my numbers and then I had to do about 17 skills that I want to encourage you to learn about. You don't have to be an expert, but you need to choose some of the skills that you need to take um, expertise on. So the next slide speaks about um, the top ICT skills that I have um, brought together in order for you to understand what the current workplace demands, what the current global, um, um, you know, the entrepreneurship sectors, the full ecosystem demands. And those skills include um, the first one that I've seen on the list is artificial intelligence. So on the next slide. So here are my skills. So I've come up with these top 17 skills that I've seen that they are in demand globally and also in the country. So the first one, I want to encourage you to look into, everyone talks about AI. 
everyone is using AI. And currently, even Zoom, in this Zoom call, there is an AI bot that is working, it's collating our data, and is connecting a whole lot of things um, behind, in the back end of this call. So artificial intelligence is used mostly in the chatbots that you see whenever you go into this website and you look at, um, and you want to, you want to engage maybe with the website or the company. So now they've employed these chatbots and they are built on, on AI. And secondly, it's machine learning. Um, machine learning is, is, is it, it existed since the days of, um, what is this guy? Uh, um, the guy who discovered, uh, yes, Telsa, Nicola Telsa, 1962. So he was the first person who built up an algorithm that mimics uh, humans and he made this robot. And out of that, it then grew into machine learning. It grew into deep learning. And, and also part of that is it's, it's, it's in demand because a lot of information and a lot of, of, of algorithms and codes that are built, now they are just not on the surface. They require a level of deep learning and machine learning. And thirdly, my favorite, data science and analytics. So in data science and analytics, I've highlighted here that it is the one that is in demand in South Africa. Right now, every decision that we have seen the Department of Health is doing, they are actually have a team of data analytics and data science uh, scientists behind them that are informing them um, what, um, what, how are the numbers, how is the virus moving, how can they conduct local transmission, how, what are the predictions on, 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 on contact tracing and things like that. And they are gathering this data and they are using that data, they are breaking it down and ensuring that it's, it's, it's useful data, it's a recognized patterns and also it uncovers some clues for further analysis and they are translating some of the big data that they have received from other countries regarding the, the, the virus and, and also they're making it in digestible narrative bites of information. So data science analytics is really is in demand and I'm going to throw in there um, what we call um, data storytelling, storytelling through data-driven um, information. So it's quite a, a huge thing currently in the U.S. where most storytellers, creatives are using data also to ensure that they enhance their story, storytelling um, abilities and ensure that, you know, data is absorbed and received in a way that it, it's quite simple. I will go on to mention also data engineering, uh, data visualization. Those also form part of the big data um, um, bubble that one, if you have interest in, you might have to learn all these things. And I can, I can tell you right now that um, these courses are available on Coursera, Udemy, um, I, I think Quena mentioned quite a number of, 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 of sites where you can visit and actually learn about these, these um, skills. And, uh, Top tech skill number six is network and information security, cybersecurity. Um, this is also quite in demand. I'll tell you why. Recently, there was a, um, a, 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 a breach in the system in the city of Johannesburg. I can list a number of organizations and no one knew about it. And when they had to trace when this started happening, when the, this DDoS was launched, it, they looked at the data and it actually was launched, I think, 27 days before before they actually had to close the whole system. And unfortunately, these are organizations that do not have um, information security personnel that can really ensure that um, organizations are well um, secured and they are curbed from DDoS attacks. So this is one of the critical skills that I know for a fact that it's in demand in the country and anywhere for that matter. And cloud computing, I've seen um, quite a number of people um, from LinkedIn that I've, I'm connecting with from of participants that are in the cloud 
platform that has a number of data centers. And the most beautiful thing about this one that exists in, in Cape Town is the fact that um, all the data will be stored within the country. So it's not a meta method where it's stored in different places. So it gives us a lot of, a con you know, some sort of uh, confidence that, you know, our data remains here and it will not, sovereign data also remains in the country. It will not um, be available in other countries because once it's here, there are strict policies that ensures that um, Amazon services, um, Amazon web services that do not utilize that data. Again, I'll mention a VR and AR extended reality. Right now, one of the key things that the basic education have, have noted is the fact that they need to come up with, with several methods of ensuring that education happens with or without COVID. Currently, we are in a state of emergency as a country in our education because there is a gap that is building up. People that are in rural areas are really not catching up with what's happening. There's a lot of resources online. People are getting, um, you know, they're getting all the, getting into these webinars where they are learning, but there are people that are, are left behind. So if you can learn a bit of these skills, you can tap into this space, be innovative and ensure that you create products that can utilize AR and VR. Um, and number nine, we're looking at internet of things. IoT has been in the market for the past six years and now it's growing with the use of AI behind it because now people can utilize break down that information into nibble nibble um, you know that those bites that one can digest and also make use of that i know a couple of mining companies th those that are looking into um integrating mining and tech that are using a lot of iot in 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 in, in um lipalale in one of the biggest coal mines they have put sensors under underground now that we have a huge um, implication of, of, of having workers to be taken out of, of, of their workplace because of the lock, lockdown. Now they're using IoT, but now you need someone who has that ability to be able to ensure that IoT networks are launched fully well, and you need to learn those skills. And I encourage you also to look up um, where you can get these skills. Coursera and Udemy also have nice packages for these skills. UI and UX design, this is one of my favorites. Um, you know, you would need someone to actually ensure that whatever you're building, the products you're building, you know, it's understanding, it's understandable. And also there's a there's that link that speaks to, you know, empathy and things that are included in design thinking. So UI and UX designers, they use a lot of CRMs also within their their, their methodology and this is one of the best skills also I encourage you to have if you're looking into be in the I, in the IT industry for quite for some time mobile development also it's a it's a skill that I would encourage you to look into blockchain currently all APIs of blockchain um, we don't have in South Africa we don't have um, such hyperledger um, APIs I know a good company in Netherlands that are building such and they have posted them in the open source softwares where you can actually use them but I encourage you to learn about blockchain quantum computing we have two quantum computing sites in South Africa and it's a good team led by Dr. Happy Sitole and he's always looking for women to join this. So I encourage you to join um, these groups also and learn about it. And you know, someone mentioned um, a mentorship, that in mentorship, you know, you can learn from someone from far and they can encourage you into, into getting deeper into your career if you're looking to go in, into IT for a very long time. So robotics also, it's part of the skills I encourage you to look into product management, um, Salesforce and CRM. So those are customer relationship management. Um, there's a lot of demand I've seen in the social media companies, Twitter also, they have seen they were looking for a lot of people that have a CRM skill. Um, you know, it's a changing world and all these companies are changing and they're looking for an inclusion of all, of all the mixture of these skills. And just lastly, programming languages. I cannot emphasize this one um, because 
when I started um, my varsity, I had to learn Java and C sharp. And I used to think, you know what, I don't understand this, but I need to know it. I don't know why I need to know it, but I'm so glad I did that because with this background, I'm able to code in Python and also able to really, um, you know, expand my knowledge in other languages. And, and really, one of the things I want to emphasize on is the fact that um, now IT industry is driving the economies and lastly when um the the the, the worth the ipcc met they projected that um, the it industry um it, it will reach about 5.2 trillion us dollars in 2020 globally but i can tell you right now in south africa our it budget is close to um sheesh close to 420 billion rands and and the, the telecoms industry the industry that i'm in it takes about 35 percent of that and the rest it's within the soft and the hardware side and this is the industry that is still lacking women and i really think that if you consider these skills you're going to thrive in the it industry um next slide please Diego. so this is the last slide which is really about me and i can just tell you a bit of about my journey. So I, I'm a STEM graduate. I studied physics, computer science, and, and, and chemistry with a whole bunch of maths and statistics in there. And, and I landed in medical biology science, in science um, where we used to work a lot with, um, with you know, human communicable disease. We used to analyze those. And then, la then later on, I was coached into nuclear science. I was trained as a nuclear scientist. And I worked in the, in the biomedical as well as nuclear medicine inclusion. And I specialized on um, chemotherapy of the thyroid cancer. So the treatment of that, I specialized in those radio isotopes that are used for treatment for that and i got bored at some point i decided to hang my lab coat and i went into broadband infrastructure um, it's been four years in this uh, so my company builds um, last miles we connect the unconnected currently we're working on a rural connectivity using tv white spaces and 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 also we are working on building a fiber optic plant where we ensure that there is a fixed line for every home whether you're in the rural place or in a suburb you have 100 megabytes speeds in your house this will ensure that the gap is bridged and we do not have the variety of people that uh, are not connected others have a huge um, appetite for the internet and they, they, they just can't connect and um, I sit in a number of boards. I'm also a mentor. So one of the things that I've done is that I did not let go of my nuclear science um, background. I'm still part of that. We are busy looking at alternative technologies using nuclear for energy in across Africa. So I'm a governor for a certain agency that looks within that. And lastly, I'm a comedian wannabe. I am training to do that. And I'm also training to be a good dancer. I can still do a voice in my mind, but I cannot manifest it on my legs. And I think that uh, it would be great to really connect with everyone here. About 152 participants are in this webinar. I would be love to connect with everyone. Thank you so 